subject as it has been given to you, we are going to be looking at uh, university education, uh, the key uh, to career and business success. I was taught to give a lecture. So before I move far into describing uh, or uh, uh, sharing the thoughts that I had prepared, I'm reminded of what I uh, read, or I actually heard it on BBC radio. They said, what is a lecture? And the definition was, a lecture is the process of transferring notes uh, from the lecturer's textbook to the student's notebook without passing through the heads of either of them. Uh, it was meant to be a joke uh, on one of the BBC uh, uh, programs. But I hope this one is not going to be like that. Um, I would like us to get something that passes from this screen uh, to your heads, and it just doesn't have to pass through. And university education, can it be a key indeed to business success? I will extrapolate on that particular subject. Can it be a key uh, to career success? Maybe let's begin by understanding what is education. I went round and understood a few thoughts, and then they say education is actually the process of receiving and giving systematic instruction. It must be systematic, then it becomes educative. Um, if it's not systematic, then it, it may not be education, it will be just uh, communication, one person communicating with the other person. But it must be systematic instruction, especially that is done at school, at college or at university. Uh, so that's what education is. Another thought that was shared was um, that um, education is actually the process of facilitating learning. Uh, you must facilitate the learning and uh, then the students must acquire the knowledge that is being shared uh, in that particular aspect. But the knowledge must lead to transformation. Uh, the person must change their values, or they must develop some new habits, or they must come up with new beliefs. Whatever you study must affect the way you think. Sometimes you reflect and see what is happening in Malawi, and then you say, okay, did education really change certain people? <laughs> uh, we had a certain debate um, on um, uh, different people that are very well educated and, and that they behave like everybody else who has not been educated. Um, it's a lecture, so I'm told University of Malawi Chancellor College had to actually fight for, eco, uh, for what they call academic freedom. Uh, so let's have some academic freedom here. Um, I, I hope nobody is going to take these issues out and then uh, bring spies here and then begin to shut down the university. But I'm just thinking, if you can have a leadership that allows the youth to paint themselves in very funny colors, and they are dressed in suits, but the, the youth that they call my youth are, are painted like they are going for maybe an audition for a movie called Avatar. <laughs> Can you say education is changing the way we behave? Is education changing our values? Is education changing our beliefs? So that's one question that I want you to have as we go on with uh, the lecture. Education frequently takes place, of course, obviously, under the guidance of educators. But there must be somebody who is guiding the process of education uh, then it becomes education. And of course, they say the methods are quite valid. You can do it in storytelling, you can actually do some discussions, there could be some teaching, and then the lecture or training, or actually a directed research. You can actually learn a lot through a directed research. So that's what education is all about. And I would like to highlight this before we move. Any education it should not just stop at acquisition of knowledge, but it must translate into skills developed, values formed, and then beliefs shaped, and habits formed, and there must be good habits. What is education? We will continue uh, extrapolating on this topic. Education can 
take place in formal or informal settings. That's another uh, thought about it. And if it's going to take place in these settings which are formal or informal, uh, it says it has a formative effect. It must lead to a formation of new values. So there must be that formative effect. If that formative effect is not there, then that education is not helpful or education has not necessarily had its impact or its effect. I am sure you already know that you start with preschool, you go all the way to uh, tertiary edu uh, uh, education and that's all the wide spectrum of education. That's what the professors would be happy to, to hear uh, because this is actually uh, tying in well with um, uh, what um, the books say. I just didn't put the quotations, but trust me, I quoted from sources uh, that are well. But this, these are my definitions of education. What is education to me? I, I think of education as the systematic programming of your mind. That's what education is. It is the process of installi installing the mind operating software in your brain. Every child is born with a blank mind. It's like the, the computer which has no, no, no software loaded. It, it, it's blank. Then you load the operating software, which is uh, the common one, which most of you know is Windows. So you either load Windows 95, for those of you that are old enough to appreciate. Uh, then you either load Windows 98, or you can load Windows 10. Which one is going to accommodate more applications? Windows 95 or Windows 10? Windows 10. So this kind of lecture is not where you sit quietly. I try to bring in the element of what they do in certain churches just to make sure people don't sleep. <laughs> well, what I would like you to do is to simply ask the person sitting next to you, what is the vision of the mind operating software running in your brain. Whose vision is so old? The last time they learned anything and read any other book was Kalingadin's book. They have not done anything new and they are stuck with the old version, the, 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 the Windows 95. Before Windows 95, there was Windows 3.2. I think there was something like that. No, no, okay, before, okay, DOS was the one, but the, the one that started Windows was 3.1. Where you switch on the computer, go switch on a kettle, and you'd be assured to make your coffee before the computer had completed booting. <laughs> Now, this is a challenge in a society where people are not constantly upgrading their thinking. They are not constantly upgrading their education. They are stuck with a mind operating software which is not compatible with the challenges and the problems that the world is bringing today. So if you are still stuck with the certificate, I, I tell this to people when I go to uh, do trainings or teach people in companies. If you join a company with a certificate, and then you are still working in the same company 10 years later with the same certificate as a qualification, there is a problem with you. <laughs> and you must have that desire to constantly upgrade yourself. Load in a new mind operating software, otherwise you'll be left behind. Now, here comes the question. Is education indeed important for career success? Of course. I mean, if you're going to work for anyone, they will assess you based on the levels of knowledge, the levels of expertise that you've acquired over time. You cannot succeed in the corporate world if you are not in touch or updated uh, with the um, with the current issues. I mean, you can be an accountant for a bank today when all you know is the bookkeeping that you learned in the 1990s. And then you are trusting the Lord for a miracle that you can be. 
And you be promoted to chief accountant. No, that's witchcraft. You, you, can't, you can't be going every day to your pastor to pray for you to get a promotion when you are not preparing yourself for progress. No, it, it will happen by miracle. I don't know. Then you are going to bring down that company. Because you don't know how to do the current accounting procedures. So you need education. You need to be constantly be upgraded. But let's look at the university education as a ladder that takes you to the top in the corporate world. Uh, think about it as every stage that you are progressing in your career, you are actually taking yourself closer to the higher levels of leadership. Um, somebody who has just an SCE, and then they are really striving hard to rise to the level where they will be a CEO of an organization. Um, it, it's, it's a good desire, but it must be accompanied by some more books that you're going to be reading. So university education is indeed quite key in that aspect. Let me quote King Solomon. King Solomon is probably one of the people that we are considered and still considered today one of the wisest that ever lived. And he said, and I quote, get wisdom, get understanding. Though it costs all you have, get understanding. If you need the reference in terms of quoting, uh, I can't do the Harvard referencing on this one. Uh, but for this one, I'm going to say this one, you're going to find it in his writings in Proverbs. And it's somewhere in Proverbs chapter 4. And then you can go verse 5 and verse 7. So that's where they say, get wisdom, get understanding. Though it costs all you have, get understanding. And I was contemplating and thinking about that and say, why would King Solomon really stress that wisdom and knowledge must be sought at all costs? He's actually saying, look, even if it's going to cost you selling your car, get understanding, get some knowledge. Why would you want uh, to elevate knowledge to that level? There, there are reasons, and that's what we would like to uh, discuss tonight. Some of the thoughts that I would like you to uh, take home with probably uh, begin from set some minimum standards for yourself. Uh, to say, as far as I'm concerned, I will begin to call myself educated when I at least attain this level. Uh, I'm suggesting a minimum of at least a degree. If you could set that as a minimum to say, I will begin to appreciate that I've loaded a lot more updated software in my brain. It must at least come to that level of a degree. The goodness with um, uh, the diversity of learning now, which is coming with uh, universities like Unicaf and all the other private universities, is that they've now made education readily available to whoever is willing to invest in education. Uh, in those days, there was only the University of Malawi, and then uh, there were so many students writing the exams, and then few had to qualify. The many that didn't go to university were not necessarily uh, not intelligent, but the spaces were not enough. So that's why I'm saying, let's begin to set that as a minimum, uh, so that we can go up. Uh, our friends in Parliament have received their laptops. And then I was commenting on... Um, a thread that we are discussing on social media with one parliamentarian and was saying, look, we need them. And I was saying, yes, you really need them. But I hope parliament is also going to spend a little bit of money to now bring in somebody who is going to operate the laptop. And let's not assume everyone is going to put it to good use. So probably there is need for that extra learning. The second thing that I would like to stress about this higher education is that you must be focused. I remember in college, I had a friend uh, who started with um, the science course. And then he went for medicine. In those days, there was no college of medicine here. And then he was, I, I think he went to either Australia or UK to study medicine. And then before long, we discovered he had withdrawn. Uh, he didn't want to continue with medicine. And then he had now registered for another course, 
I, I can't remember what it was. And then halfway, he also withdrew and then registered for another one. Uh, fortunately, he finally concluded his uh, journey of searching for knowledge as a lawyer. But he had spent close to 17 years of just moving around and thinking about what kind of knowledge he should load into his brain as the mind operating software. I think he took a little longer. Uh, you shouldn't take that long. So be focused and know what you must learn. Uh, because if you have not set yourself to say, this is what I want to focus on, you're going to be everywhere. Um, develop a clear career path progression and then identify the set of knowledge that is going to be useful for you. Because not every knowledge should be acquired you will waste a lot of time. Uh, but you must acquire that which supports the dream or the vision or the aspirations that you have. Uh, this is not downloaded from the internet. Um, that's a picture I took from some of the books that I've read. Um, and I even read this one. Um, uh, the, the African dream. Of course, I, I, I got stuck somewhere. Uh, I'll finish it. Uh, it's bigger than the rest of the books. But <laughs> something that I've noted about knowledge is you cannot have enough. Knowledge must be sought and must be sought diligently. It, it must be something that is actually part and parcel of your eating and part, of, and part and parcel of your drinking. I don't know. Here is another part where you can now speak to the neighbor speaking, uh, sitting next to you. Ask them, how many books have you read this year? Just, just ask them. The minimum I would like to prescribe to you is just read a book. <laughs> I just, yeah, if you are less, read at least one book in a month. Yeah, if you are less, I would suggest read at least one book in a month. And uh, these are the kind of books that I read sometime, and then I've got another uh, new thing. And fortunately, in our family, uh, it's a family of readers. And, and if there is something that you are going to find in every bedroom, uh, is a bookshelf in our house. So each child has got his and her own bookshelf and they've read the books that are there and we go out and, and my, my daughter who is only 12, she's always saying, can we go and buy more books? And I say, yes, this is what you should be doing. Read, read, read. Because there is no end to learning and you, you never know what is going to just transform your life by reading. Sometimes you read for academic purposes but you also read uh, just to make sure that you understand the wider things. If people were to give degrees to people, I would have received one. Uh, but I chose a particular section of reading, uh, which as of now, universities have not yet started uh, giving out degrees for. Uh, for 10 years, I told myself, I'm going to focus on wealth and success. What makes people succeed? What makes people build wealth? Because I just felt like, if there is something that is lacking in the country, is wealth creation. Um, but of course, uh, schools are still teaching people about uh, the grasshopper, the thorax, the antenna. <laughs> it's okay, it's good knowledge, uh, but I can just Google it and understand uh, that uh, a grasshopper has hind legs. But when it comes to this knowledge, I think it should find its way into universities. That's, that's my thinking. Uh, so when um, UNICAF wants to develop something that I can also uh, uh, respond specifically to the needs of Malawi. I will come and uh, uh, be with you in developing uh, what can help us tackle this problem of poverty in this nation. But the point I'm saying is be focused. Don't be everywhere. Know what it is that you want to study. And for me, I told myself for a decade, all I want to learn, all I want to focus on is wealth creation, money. What makes money? and how do people make money. And the goodness is when you do assignments there, your accounts also uh, get the, uh, the ticks 
to say, yes, you have passed this assignment. You have passed this assignment. Um, uh, I remember I even specifically developed a three-day course uh, where uh, the, the course is called Money 101. Uh, in university, we had um, EN 101, uh, EN 100. They, they have got these codes. So I said, look, there must be a course as well on money. And the assignment uh, that we do is make a million at least in 90 days. So that's the practical assignment uh, that my students go through. But all I'm saying is be focused. Never stop learning. I've said that part. Please don't stop learning because what helped you to be where you are today is not going to take you to the next level. So the first certificate made you learn the job that you have today. But if you want to move to a higher position, it will require new learning. It will require a new set of knowledge. So never stop learning. Uh, periodically upgrade yourself. You must be are in touch with the trends. Is formal education relevant in business? <clears throat> in our current school system is based on a model that was developed to teach children to obey orders and do as they are taught. <laughs> Compliant and obedient students become employees who are content to work for the rich or become soldiers who sacrifice their lives to protect the wealth of the rich. <laughs> so this is the critical thinking of John Taylor Gatto. I don't know whether he's correct or not, but that was his thinking. Is he correct? Is he not? Let's interrogate another critical thinker. Another critical thinker has said, and it's a lot, uh, this one is... Um, uh, uh, John, uh, John Griffin, uh, Edward Griffin. He was actually um, analyzing um, uh, in his book, uh, his book uh, was called The Creature from uh, Jelly Island. And it was talking about the Rockefeller's General Education Board, which was founded in 1903. And his thoughts were, the purpose of the foundation, meaning the General Education Board, was to use the power of money not to raise the level of education in America, as was widely believed at that time, but to influence the direction of education. The object was uh, to use the classroom to teach attitudes that encourage people to be passive and submissive to their rulers. The goal was and is to create citizens who were educated enough for productive work under supervision but not enough to question authority or seek to rise above the class. True education was to be restricted to the sons and daughters of the elite. For the rest, it would be better to produce skilled workers with no particular aspirations other than to enjoy life. Was he correct? Is this true? I don't know. Uh, this is a public lecture. We will probably engage into a question and answer uh, session afterwards. Let's look at another critic. And this critic is Robert Kiyosaki. Uh, if you haven't read his books, uh, then uh, probably I will encourage you to uh, buy some. Uh, his most common one is Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Although my dad went to school and had advanced degrees and had a good job that paid well, as a family, we were still financially poor, at least compared to the families of my rich friends at the age of nine, I began to wonder why going to school did not make my mom and dad rich. In ordinary schools, we are taught to work for the rich, shop at the stores of the rich, and borrow money from the banks of the rich, invest in the businesses of the rich, but not how to be rich. Um, <laughs> did you ever take any course in university that taught you wealth creation, wealth building? Any of you that took that course? <laughs> there is a hand there. Which university was that? Um, I did a master's at... Uh... Sammy in Arusha, oh, yeah. and one of our lecturers gave us a dollar, okay. and she said, build from this dollar. 
and that's something I've never done before. So right. everyone in the class was given a dollar. I was told, bring back more. Wow. But bring, uh, but then you bring, you give me my dollar back, you keep your money, but make more. Right. Okay. That was quite interesting. No, that was interesting. So, let's now question this. Indeed, is the traditional education <coughs> preparing somebody for a life of entrepreneurship, a life of business? Well, somebody who is fast will look like he or she is intelligent because they were able to do it, because <coughs> they are simply wired with a fast processor. Some of you, you can relate to that. You are in your offices, you go to your boss, you give them uh, a, a document to check, the boss will say, yeah, just leave it. I, I, I need to sleep over it. I need to think over it. Others will simply say, oh yes, I approved. It, it's going. <laughs> I mean, the, the, the processes are different. The processes are different. <laughs> and he says, look, we can't. And then the other weakness is saying the school system um, uh, brings is it punishes failure. And if you remember the primary school days, if you fail, a, 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 I mean, something, our teachers, especially those of us that went to those old schools, they, they would make you stand at the back on one leg. I mean, the, the, whole, the whole period you are standing because you failed a sum. But, but look, in, in, you, you need to encourage students to understand that failure is part of the learning process. Uh, because. The more you, you fail, the more you have the better chance to, to, to discover what is the right answer. So they, they, they actually give you that, that red mark which makes you look so stupid in class because you, you just didn't pass a simple question. So for that reason, I would like to give you a question that you must answer, and you must answer it within five seconds. Let's see if you can get it. I met this little girl. So, are you understanding? The question has started. <laughs> I met this little girl who was six years old. She told me she had a younger brother who was half her age. Currently, this girl has now grown. She is now 60 years of age. How old? Is the brother. What? Can you see? <laughs> so let's come again. How old is the brother now? Fifty-seven. Fifty-seven. But you see, I mean, you you you, you assume if if at age six the brother was half the age, then at the six the brother is still half the age. <laughs> The age difference was three. <laughs> because if she was six, the younger brother was three. Now, that could remain the age difference. <laughs> it doesn't so you can see, it's not like when you say the it doesn't mean that you're not intelligent. You simply needed more time to process. I wanted to explain that concept to say you need longer time to process. <laughs> Let's go to this question. Actually, that was the book uh, that I was talking about. If you want to be uh, rich and happy, don't go to school. But there's a question mark here. Um, he, he actually didn't say you shouldn't go to school. He was simply interrogating some of the things that the school system has probably missed out and he wished the school system had included them. But the question that I would like us to focus on in that part of education and business is, is all education helpful? Why is it that we have many rich people that are very form, a little formal education, but they are successful, they are rich? Is university education really necessary for you to succeed in business? I wish I had a chance to leave you with an assignment and come again and mark it. Unfortunately, we need to conclude the lecture and uh, come to a conclusion. I downloaded this from the internet, and these are two very rich people. Uh, the late Steve Jobs, and this is Bill Gates. So there are these captions. Of course, they didn't say this. So, <laughs> so they said, I needed a degree to succeed. And Bill Gates says, they said that to you too? <laughs> uh, meaning, uh, people say, okay, you need a degree to succeed. Is that true? Do you need it in business? 
Um, that's a question worth pondering over. Uh, but I would like to show you some faces of some of the billionaires the world has known. Uh, we have the late Steve Jobs, a billionaire who dropped out of uh, uh, college. Uh, there is uh, a speech he gave to Stanford University. Uh, if you have never watched it, please, when you go to YouTube, listen and watch that speech. It was so moving. Um, but he was saying the closest he came to a graduation was that invitation to give a speech at a, as a, a, he gave a commencement speech uh, at that university. But he dropped out of college not because he was not intelligent, but he was very intelligent that he felt like the, the process of lecturing and then you take four years was quite slow, was slowing him down. And then he says, when I dropped out of college um, and I wasn't really on the course, I would take the courses that I wanted to take. And then it was that knowledge that I actually used to build Apple, Apple computers. So let's look at the next person, Dr. Bill Gates. Uh, he was given an honorary doctorate. But of course, he doesn't call himself a doctor. You know, it, it's, it's this part of the world where an honorary doctorate degree uh, can actually make people even want to change yeah, certain things uh, that have their names on them. But the fact is, when he was giving that speech, when he was giving, uh, receiving the doctorate degree, uh, he started by saying, you know, I taught my father that I will one day I will get that degree. I wish now he can now know that I'm getting it, uh, that I've received it. But the reason why he dropped out of college was not that he wasn't intelligent again. Uh, actually, I think he dropped out of Harvard. Uh, to drop out of Harvard means you qualified for Harvard uh, and you are out of Harvard. So I want us to, to, to take things in context, because sometimes young people say, no, 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 rich people uh, don't have degrees. I can drop out. I mean, they dropped out in the USA, um, <laughs> not in Africa. <laughs> there is also a difference. Uh, when you're dropping out of, uh, out of college in Africa and when you're dropping out of uh, college in the USA. This young man who is so rich, the Facebook founder, he also dropped out of college. And then, of course, uh, this gentleman, uh, I think he dropped out of high school, uh, <laughs> Sir Richard Branson. But they all turned out well. So is education relevant? Is university education relevant in business? This is how I thought I would respond. They are so few. That's why they make the news. Actually, there are not too many of these people that have dropped out of learning and then they've become too rich. They are few. Actually, I can give you that assignment. Go Google the richest people, uh, the millionaires and millionaires. You will not uh, come to a number of over a million, probably. It's, it's because, but, but because they are few, their success without education is news. And it makes the headlines. And that's why we talk about them. So I would encourage you not to say uh, simply because others have succeeded without it, uh, therefore this is the root. No. If you study, you discover there are also so many that are educated, but they are successful. I would, of course, put a little bit of a cup, uh, but with caution to all the professors gathered here. Uh, somebody said, the higher you go with education, uh, of course, the, the more specialized you become. Uh, specialization is narrowing your knowledge uh, on a particular subject. And so you, 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 you know a lot about a little. Uh, that's, that's what specialization is all about. Uh, for you to, to, have a, uh, to, 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 to have a topic for your thesis, uh, you, you must, uh, you, you give your supervisor a topic, they say, no, no, it's too broad. Can you narrow it down? It must be specific. You give it again, you submit, they say, no, 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 narrow it down. So in specialization, all you are doing is knowing so much on just a little subject. No, that doesn't gel well with business. In business, you need to know a lot. Yeah, you need to know a little about a lot. Uh, that, that's where entrepreneurship now changes uh, the things. A friend of mine was at uh, this conference uh, where 
there was this professor speaking, and the professor has, I mean, his speciality is in thunder. Okay, so his PhD topic is in thunder. Come on, okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, then there, there was another one who was speaking, who is, uh, whose thesis was, he's a professor of reasons. <laughs> so, okay, if you want to know a lot about lizards, that's okay. Uh, but when it comes to business, you may need a wider and broader knowledge base. Uh, that's why you have very few professors who are entrepreneurs. Because they have just specialized on a particular top subject, but in business, they need to widen. Which brings me to this aspect. Yes, education matters in business success, but the question is, what kind of education? So you, you need to be specific about the kind of education that is going to make you succeed in business and in entrepreneurship. On answering the question, what kind of education, I would like to suggest, of course, I still want to stress, if you are living in this part of Africa, in this part of the world, a minimum of a degree makes a lot of sense. You know, a student uh, or a child raised in New York, in Chicago, they have a lot more stimulus to learning than we do have here. Uh, it, it even differs from those of you that have got children in area 10, in area 12, area 43. You are raising your children in an environment where they've got more stimulus to learning than the child who is growing in Nterire, Nterire, uh, one is Kukasia, Uti. I mean, in those remote areas, they have very little access to information that can actually bring about learning outside the classroom setting. So that's why I would like to stress, in this part of the world, education is very important, especially the basic one, because somebody who has got a degree in Malawi can have a conversation with a high school a high school student here and a high school student in Japan. They, they may not share the same thoughts. That's why the professor says, look, let's bridge the gap between the West and us, uh, and the gap is going to be education. Then, after getting the basics, you need to specialize based on your business interests. Part of what I do, I do business consulting. Trust you me, I have consulted with lots of business people in this country. You, you can see the comprehension of issues differs from those that have at least some education and those that simply started selling mandasi, then tomato, and then bought a truck, and then they succeeded. You tell them, look, you need a system in your business. What is a system? So to them, they, they can only grow their business empire as far as their eyes can see, as far as they can touch, uh, because they can't comprehend. I remember at some point, I was um, involved working with somebody so rich, uh, so many trucks. I mean, this guy was, uh, makes too much money. Uh, at the time I was working with him, I mean, there was a time he walked into my office and says, ah, can I have a drink? He says, ah, we don't have a fridge. Ah, we don't have a fridge. He just puts his hand in the pocket, out came enough money, sent a driver. Can you go buy a fridge? So, you <laughs> can But then I told him, we need systems to control what we are doing. You should be able to know where the track is and everything else. The guy couldn't just budge because and his thinking is, I need to speak to them on the, uh, the, the, the wireless things. Over, okay, yeah, yeah, those kind of things. To him, that was it. Uh, you tell him you can implement a system, it, it wasn't working. So what I'm saying is that it, it differs in terms of how they comprehend. Uh, talk about our top entrepreneur in this country. I mean, I mean as far as I'm concerned, the top entrepreneur so far is Satom Pinganjia. Now, Tom Pinganjila is able to build such a business empire in the financial sector because the gentleman is educated. I mean, he can set up a bank, he can set up a discount house, he can set up bureaus. I mean, he's educated and he's able to appreciate that the system can have managers and let the managers run those things. But when you are an entrepreneur who has very limited education, levels of trust in people with, it, with knowledge uh, are also quite a challenge. So I would encourage you, if you are going to do businesses that are going to make a difference in this country, not those that die when you die. Um, 
you need some education and to understand what needs to be done. So what kind of education? I've just given you some thoughts, but this doesn't mean this is the exhaustive list. The question is, are you going to go for an MBA? Are you going to go for strategic management? Is it marketing? Is it finance? I don't know. It depends on the type of business you're running, and it also depends on assessing your levels of knowledge gaps, so that whatever it is that you're doing makes sense. We have answered the question. Yes, a university education is the key to your career and your business success. Thank you very much. listening to Mr. Kachaki. But before we part with him, we would like to pose a few questions. Because it's already late, we think that he, we should only have five questions. And reserve others for the next uh, session. Who is uh, asking the first question? Yes, Mr. Mandama. No. Mangame. All right, thank you, sir. Our distinguished <coughs> guest speaker, Mr. Kachaje, ladies and gentlemen, all product pro observed. From the presentation. Sorry, sorry. Is someone writing down these questions? You are taking down. Okay, thanks. Yeah, go ahead. All right, thank you. From the presentation and uh, from examples all over the world, why is it that uh, many of these successful entrepreneurs are uh, school or college dropouts? Or should we say that is there something lacking in the current education system worldwide? <coughs> thank you. That is taken. The next question. Yes. Um, my question is, what should universities do differently to recognize and harness geniuses that um, does not qualify for normal education? Is that taken two? Last question, Ekama, uh, what is the term? It's three years. Actually, the term is ending this uh, November. So come November, I will not be this president anymore, and I will not run for another term. They, they allow you to run twice, but yeah, I think others can also take over. Um, what is it that we have done? You know, Economics Association, what it does is uh, it's an independent body of economists and other interested people in the economy. So its membership is not only economists, but we also have people that are not economists. Uh, but, you know, economics cannot be confined to one discipline uh, because uh, an engineer is contributing to the economy. Uh, a vendor is contributing, so uh, that's how we define it. But the majority are economists. What do we do? We give advice. So we analyze what must be the right things. And then when we analyze, we talk to the policy makers. And the policy makers are at liberty to take our advice or not take it. Uh, most often, they don't take it. And that's why we are where we are. Uh, it's because they, they just don't take it. I'll give a very fresh example. I mean, when we are doing the pre-budget consultations for this particular budget, some of the things that we say to the minister is, look, we, we have been implementing the growth and development strategy for five years. 
and we had set our targets to grow the economy at 7% annually, in all the five years, we failed to reach that target. So there must be something that we're doing wrongly. I mean, you, you can't implement a strategy for five years and fail to attain any, any uh, targets in that five years. But the reason why we're not failing those is um, the, the choices we make in this nation are more politically inclined than economically sound. So, for example, we, we told the leadership, look, this Malada subsidy program is a good program. It would be good to build houses for poor people. But our economy is not at the level where you can afford to build houses for an individual when children don't have a classroom block. So I would rather the, ma the money that is going to one individual to have a house, use that money, build a classroom block. Now, economically, that makes sense. But politically, it doesn't. Because it is already in the manifesto. So if it's in the manifesto, you need to implement it. So that's where the challenge becomes. And people don't make choices because they make sense uh, economically, but because politically, uh, they can gain you mileage. So on that note, I'd like to end with the quote that I heard from Bill Gates. And Bill Gates said, until we reach a position where the solutions and strategies that we devise ensure that the politician is going to still get his or her votes, the business person is going to get his business deals, and then the poor are going to be helped. That's the time who have found a lasting solution to the problems in this world. Now, it's not going to be easy uh, to please those three stakeholders, but we can still try. Thank you very much.